In today's video, I made bicycle, mix oil paints, paint minor weathering, compare my Warhammer 40k miniatures with a World War II tank, paint bucket, and play with a fire. Hello fellow modelers! One of the most iconic British tanks from World War II, without doubt, is Churchill. I have this lovely dragon kit already a few years, so it's time to build it. As you can see, the kit is relatively simple. It has straightforward instructions and only a few parts. The details are lovely, so it's going to be easy model. The parts are molded from grey and soft plastic. Thus, it is comfortable to remove them out of the sprue with a sharp side cutters and try to remove the most pronounced mold lines. You can use metal or soft nail files for this purpose. The residual plastic mold runner or gate is sometimes on tricky places, so if you want to remove them, you must be extra careful and use sharp hobby blade. The kit does not have almost any problem with a fitting. It had only one missing hole for the connection pin. So you can cut out the pin from the opposite part or drill out small hole. I use for gluing plastic super thin glue. It usually makes a strong bond and the application is simple. I do not recommend it for large flat parts like aircraft fuselage because this glue is quite aggressive and is active for a long time so you can find on your model sink marks after painting one or two weeks later. Therefore, I use for this purpose flexible super glue. Honestly, I wanted to build this model easily and without modifications, but after assembly testing, I realized that it looks relatively dull. Primarily, I found a lot of historical pictures with missing tracks fenders, like here. So only this small improvement. I am cutting out fenders with a razor saw. This tool is super thin, thus the cut is nicely clean and narrow. I am removing the front and middle part on the left side. And on the right, I will leave only the back part. This way, this modification will make the overall model less symmetrical. The residual plastic you can remove with a sharp blade and smooth edges with metal files. The Churchill has interesting tracks, so they are now pleasantly highlighted. That was easy, now let's finish the rest. The turret parts have a significant mold lines, but it is no problem to sand it down. Maybe you are thinking, what a weird looking Churchill with a strange Sherman 75mm gun. There were probably 200 and A75 Churchill versions modified from destroyed or scrapped Shermans, so it was a field modification. The Dragon sometimes has a problem with the conversions like this. Thus, I recommend using some blueprints and glue parts to correct position. For example, the main hatch should be more to the left. Now I'm drilling out gun barrel with a hypodermy needle, because they are sharper than ordinary drill bits. The whole kit is relatively simplified, as you already noticed, so if you want to play with the details, you have plenty of options. I only think that the tow rope should be made from separate part, because it looks quite monolithic. I am careful removing it with a sharp blade, and when the work is done, I can smooth surface of a thin glue. I made in previous videos with lovely ropes from copper conductors. You can find a link in the video descriptions if you want to see how.
nobody will see the bottom of the tank, but if you want to be painstaking, you can fill holes for screws with an epoxy party. I recently bought new super glues for models, because you can nicely use them as a glue, but also as a filler. I don't know how many types exist, so for example this one is flexible and black. The Churchill turret was cast, so the surface texture should be rough. It was not horrible like on Soviet tanks, so try to not overturn this effect too much. I use Tamiya Grey Party, which I dilute with a Mr. Color leveling thinner. And you can use a sponge or old brush for rough texture. The residual party you can safely remove from plastic with a super glue debonder or some not aggressive lacquer thinner. Another thing that was quite often was extra armor from Tantrex, like here. Indeed, it looks cool. One option is to recast tracks from resin, but easier is to shorten these rubber tracks and use them for accessories. I can shorten them because you cannot see tracks under fenders, so no problem here. You must only measure how many links you can remove. I prefer to spray model with a primer first. The acrylic paints are not super resilient on the pure plastic and primer will improve adhesion. Also, it will unify the model and reveal some imperfections. I use for rubber tracks black surfacer, it is basically highly diluted party. And other advantage is excellent adhesion and is relatively elastic. And it is good base for metallic colors. I have from AK the whole paint set for AAV models, so I found precise shade for British armor vehicles. However, they are prepared for 35 scale and optically, if you have a smaller scale, then you need to mix lighter shades. It is basic optical illusion. The painting is the best part of the whole model, so I want more colors. Good is to start with a basic shading and highlights. Try to make raised and exposed parts more browns with lighter shades. Also, you can paint some panels with different shades. It will make the whole model optically less uniform. You will always make a smooth transition with an airbrush, but if you want to achieve stronger color contrast, you can use paper boards like a template. I use an airbrush for basic shading, because the rest I'm going to make with oil and acrylic paints. If you have all this done, spray on the surface soft layer of a clear varnish. It is good base for decals, but primarily for washes. When I wanted to glue tracks, I check out some photos. Then I realized that if I remove fenders, I must increase the size of guide rails for tracks, because in the kit are missing. It is not so difficult modification if you have some small plastic profiles. I mix my wash from dark brown pan liner and enamel thinner. You can make nice artificial shading and some details more browns with this wash. It is better to apply oil paint on the matte surface, but it is also possible on the semi-gloss or even gloss layer. I decided to make the model more colorful, so I use for turret more yellowish shade, and I paint only exposed sections. The oil paints are great if you want to blend layer and achieve smooth transition or change color shade. But for the uniform and sharp color contrast, it's easier and better to use acrylic paints. Also, the drying time of acrylic paints is only a few seconds. 
And again, I want to change the color shade on fenders. So the best for this is oil paint, which you can apply in very soft layer and nicely blend. If you learn the difference between paint types and when to use them, you will enjoy painting your models as I do. And if you want to paint some stronger color contrast with oil paints, I recommend spray matte varnish first. Also, we will protect your previous paint job. I am applying a few earth shades on the hard paper board and I use for diluting with matte effect thinner or white spirit. I recently started painting with oil paints my Warhammer 40k miniatures. So you probably can see some influence on my tanks and probably other models. The matte varnish which I spray on the model is like a sponge, so the oil paint suck in partly. You can blend paint with a dry brush because the drying time is one or two days. It depends on how much oil is inside the paint. Interesting would be to paint each track link with a different color shade. The colorful tank is happy tank. I told you, small influence from my Wargaming miniatures. Anyway, the model is partly finished and it only remains to paint some minor weathering and small accessories. I have from Model Emporium eShop these lovely 72 scale figures. I only lost box for my British set, so the Soviet troops are just for your illustration. So do not worry. I wanted to use a CMK resin figures first, but I was shocked by the size difference. The front war figure seems to be more accurate. It looks like almost like 48 scale. I already told you that drying time of oil paints is one or two days so that you can fix your paint job with another smooth layer of varnish. I know, the model looks like from some comics book, but do not worry, the weathering will make it less pronounced, at least I guess. As usual, good is to start with scratches. I use acrylic paints and it is important to use good paintbrushes with uh, natural hairs. This process is time consuming, but you have a perfect control under the final result. The faster option is to moisten black foam into the color and make easy random scratches. I prefer it on the edges and easily accessible parts of the model. You do not need any special products for weathering like dust, leaks or splatters. Only what you need is some light and dark brown enamel paints and thinner. You will save a lot of money and space on your working table. You can make, for example, accumulated dust effect with a highly diluted paint. You can imitate the splatter effect again with a diluted paint. I moisten the brush with this mix and with some toothpick or blade softly run over the hairs. And do not forget to use more shades. These weathering effects are super easy and straightforward. And the result looks nice. It is funny if you compare it before and after. All this only with two cheap paints. The leaks are same. Apply highly diluted color and correct shape with a smooth brush and thinner. I didn't mention why I use enamel and not acrylic or oil. I don't like acrylic for this purpose because when you overdone some steps it is hard or impossible to repair it. If you are a beginner with AAV models as I am, you will appreciate the possibility to correct some steps easily with a thinner. And the second advantage is a lovely matte effect and faster drying time versus oil paints. I mentioned corrections. Here is a good example. Some splatters are dry already one day and I realize that some are too large. 
Luckily, it is not a problem. You can use enamel thinner and remove dots entirely. Or modify some leaks. The Churchill without fenders could be quite messy. Luckily, it is a small scale and you don't need to use tons of dry pigments. So, how to make accumulated mud? There is a plenty of options and this one is one of the easiest. You need some dry pigment. It does not matter which brand or if you make your own from dry pastels. Apply it on the surface and fix it with a pigment fixer. The pigment fixer is transparent enamel fluid which is sticky when it dry. As you can see it diluted powder, so if you want more complex structure you can pour more powder on the wet layer. I must point out that it is 72 scale, so you don't need any special binder. You can use for a larger scale mix of dry pigments, plaster and probably add some soft dust or natural materials like dry roots or grass. Ok, I promised you bicycle, so here it is. I bought a few sets for my 72 scale models last year and then I forgot that I have something like this. I think it will be lovely detail. The bicycle is from photo edge parts. You can modify frame and wheels because they are relatively flat. However, if you apply adequately amount of paint, it will be acceptable. The Churchill has a lot of empty space in the back, so the bicycle amount of other details is worth it. You can find a lot of nice pictures of a Churchill with a shiny tracks even on muddy ground, so I made them shinier even on my model. I used steel polishing powder from Ushi van der Rosten. I used similar powder for my Kawasaki H2R, so you probably already know that you can achieve a gleaming result with it. At the end of the weathering process, you can paint some mud with a darker brown shades, just make it less uniform. The model is almost finished, so let's add some final details. I want to add the chain. You can buy for your models different sizes. I know that exists some chemicals for metal finish, but you can simply use lighter. Now I'm making bucket from old resin accessories. I usually forgot to attach boxes and accessories with some ropes, so this time I didn't. I use for this purpose lead wires. They are soft, so you can shape them as you want. The last detail is small antenna. I simply use all plastic sprue and lighter. If you heat up the plastic, you can nicely pull out thin string. And that is all. I began to learn 3D modeling and printing, so you can expect more crazy stuff in the future. If you follow my Instagram or Facebook profiles, you already know. I do not have a TikTok, sorry. Okay, thank you for watching, see you next time, and here is the presentation of the finished model.